Before we pour the foam, we'll show you how to add a drain tube for the front compartment. We'll drill a hole through each bulkhead, just larger than the diameter of the PVC tube. Then we'll use epoxy to seal all the exposed wood. Once the epoxy dries, we'll slide in the PVC tube, making it longer on the front and the rear than needed, and then we'll seal all the openings up with thickened epoxy. We do this to ensure that no water gets into the sealed compartments. Before we pour the foam, there are a few key factors that we need to cover. First, the type of foam. We're using a closed cell, two-part urethane pour foam. This foam is US Coast Guard approved for flotation with a two pound density. That means a cubic foot of the foam fully cured weighs two pounds. The mixed ratio of this particular foam is one to one. The next key factor is the environment. The manufacturer of this foam recommends 80 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit with moderate humidity. We have found that it is indeed critical to have the proper temperature and humidity for the foam to expand correctly. We interpret moderate to mean 50%, but our experience tells us that 60% or less is necessary for proper expansion. Low humidity is critical because the foam does react with moisture, the moisture in the air, the moisture on the substance that you're working, that will prevent proper expansion. Next, application. Anytime you pour foam, you should have a clean and dry surface. Be sure that all wood is properly and fully sealed with epoxy before pouring the foam. For this demonstration, we'll be using small cups, but have found that larger batches expand more efficiently. When mixing, we use three containers. The first two containers are used for measuring the foam, part A and part B. These containers are correspondingly marked. We'll pour equal parts of part A and part B into each container, then pour them into the third container to mix the foam. All of these details are critical because foam reacts with moisture. With too much moisture in the air, the foam will not expand properly and will weigh more. This will negatively affect the foam's ability to function as reserve buoyancy, and you will need to purchase more foam than anticipated, and you'll end up with a more expensive and heavier boat. On to mixing the foam. Be sure to read and follow your foam manufacturer's instructions carefully. The foam we're using has a mixed time of 20 to 25 seconds while being stirred vigorously, but do not overmix the foam. It is fully mixed when it turns a uniform cream color. Keep in mind, we don't mix in our mixing cups. We mix in a third cup, which is discarded after each use. Once mixed, immediately pour into the cavity, and the foam will start to expand. It will be fully expanded in 20 to 30 minutes, and you'll know because it'll be hard. You can pour another layer directly over the cured foam. You want to fill the cavity until it's flush or slightly above. A few low spots are okay, but they should be small. First step is to take off all the high spots. Our goal is to have our floor sit down flush across the top of our beams and also flush with the foam. So I like to use a scrap piece of wood as a guide to show me where I'm too high. That way I know where to cut off. You can use a handsaw or blade of any type. Uh, power tool, just trim it off flush. The biggest concern people have with foam is water absorption. If the compartments are fully sealed, you don't have to worry about that. In the past, and even now, many manufacturers don't create sealed compartments for the foam. They simply pour the foam below the deck into the bilge area where deck water drains. As this deck water that is drained into the bilge puddles on top of the foam, it slowly absorbs water. This is very bad practice. Neither we nor any foam manufacturers recommend the use of foam in this way. Our designs utilize a below deck grid structure in which the floor is used to fully seal the top of each compartment that the foam is poured into. This is why we seal both ends of a front compartment drain tube. So we cut the foam down in one of the compartments. We cut it off rough, but just a little tall. We'll come back with our with the board with some sandpaper and make it smooth. People will ask, now I've cut the top off the foam. Do I have to seal it before I put the floor down? Well, that's very debated because some people say that once you have any exposed foam, it should be fully sealed. But a closed seal foam should have thousands of individual sealed bubbles, not just a sealed outer layer. Therefore, under every trimmed bubble, there should be a sealed bubble. For this reason, we believe that in a fully sealed compartment, that sealing the top of the foam is not necessary, but if you choose to do so, you're not doing anything incorrect. 